Hello guys, welcome to the next session of developing a console based banking application using Java programming language. In the last session we discussed on how we can implement a transfer fund functionality um, in the banking application. In this session we are going to see how we can maintain the transaction history that uh, we have performed for the uh, transfer uh, like uh, fund transfer. So in the last session we discussed on how we can transfer some amount from one account into the another account so it is like a debit and credit operations that we have seen in the last session in this session we are going to see how we can maintain some uh, like history of all the transactions that are performed by some specific users so let's see how we can do this so over here um, i'm in my intellij and we have this init customer method that we have previously uh, created third option that we have created which is a fund transfer and if you just go to the case 3 then we have some method to like fund transfer and then uh, over here we have some operations and if i just go to the user service dot transfer fund then if i just go to the uh, user repository dot transfer fund and in this like we have some debit and then credit operations that we have performed over here so this is just operations that we have performed but now let's see how we can maintain some uh, history of it like um, from which account we have debited and from which account uh, to which account we are going to credit and uh, also we are going to um, like in short uh, if you have uh, visited a bank so we have something called as a passbook in our uh, banks so something similar we are going to implement in this uh, our in this our banking application also so what i'm going to do is uh, we have one operation that is called as a debit and we have one operation that is called as a credit so there are two operations that we have over here so for one transfer we have the two different operations and obviously if we have the two different operations then which means that we should have the two different transactions right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create some transactions and then i'm just going to store those transactions into the uh, into some of the collections so let's see how we can do this but to create a transaction first of all what we need is we need one class so that we can hold all the transaction details into that class so let's see how we can create a class if i just go to the entity package and if i just create one new class over here so let me just give the name as transaction to that class and over here we can just add some properties so first property that i'm going to add is date so i'm just going to use a local date or maybe we can say that transaction date something like this then after that we need like um, user id so like if if for example if we are uh, sending some money to some other account then we need the user id like from that other account and if uh, we are getting some like money uh, from uh, like uh, from someone's uh, account into our account then also we need that user id so in short we need that third party user id to which we are performing the transactions right so let me just make string user id or maybe we can say that uh, transaction user id something like this you can give any name transaction user id then the third thing that we need is we need amount like what kind of uh, what what is the amount that we are going to perform a transaction for so let me just give it as private double transaction amount transaction amount then um, i'm just going to store maybe like after the transaction amount we need a type of operation whether it is a credit operation or a debit operation so let me just make it as a string transaction type transaction type and lastly we need initial balance we need initial balance like a balance before performing the operation and we need a final balance like after performing the operation something like this and now let me just do one thing let me just 
generate a constructor including all these properties so that we can just create object in a, a single line and then let me just create a getters and setters also something like this and now let me just come to the user repository inside the user repository what we can do what we can just do is we can just uh, for the debit operation first of all let's create one transaction so how we can do this so over here what we can just do we can just write transaction transaction is equals to new transaction something like this and now over here inside a constructor we have to pass some parameters because we have the parameterized constructor over here so the very first parameter is nothing but a date right so we have to pass a date over here so i'm just going to use new local date new local date or maybe what we can just do is local date dot now so we have to use something like this local date or dot now because it will um, like put the um, exact like date and times so local date dot now and then what we have to do is second parameter is uh, user id so over here we have to put the user id that specific user id we are getting something uh, with the help of parameter we can just put that user id itself and let me just put that user id then the third parameter that we have is we have the transaction amount the amount also we are getting from um, parameter so let me just put that amount over here then the next par parameter uh, next thing that we have to set is transaction type whether it is credit or debit so obviously if we are putting it as a debit i mean we are in the debit method that means it is a debit operation right so we can just uh, directly hard code it something like debit then the next thing that we have is initial balance and then final balance so initial balance is nothing but account balance and then we have a final balance also so we can just put some final balance something like this as you can see over here right now one thing that I just noticed is over here we are using the user ID but this particular user ID is nothing but our uh, our user ID that means like um, if I am logged in with my account then inside this user ID we will get my user ID my specific user ID not a like third party user ID right but over here we want the third party user ID not my specific user ID so that is the reason what we can just do is um, we can just go to the transfer amount method and in this we are getting the user id then we are getting the pi user id and then we are getting the amount so this pi user id is nothing but a third party user id so this particular user id we need so how, how we can do this we can just add one more parameter over here something like this and this pay user id we can just use instead of this particular user id so if you are following my sessions uh, from like uh, from very initial then you must be knowing that uh, what is this user id and what is the pi user id and what i'm talking about over here and let me just add one more parameter uh, in this debit method too and for the credit similarly what we have to do is we have to like pass our user id again so we have to pass the user id something like this and what we have to do is we have to just add one more parameter here also something like this or yeah so over here we are just getting some naming con conflict so what we can just do we can just do one thing let me just first of all remove this particular and let me just change the name of first parameter and now let me just use like uh, replace the name of the first parameter something like this and then let me just add string user id something like this and yes now our all the errors are gone then over here we have created one transaction similar transaction we have created in our uh, cre credit method also something like this but now this time what we have to do we have to like change 
some of the values so first value will remain the same because it is nothing but uh, uh, date only then the second for, uh, for the second parameter what we have to do we have to use this user id instead of this pay user id amount will remain the same the type will be the credit account balance is nothing but the same and final balance will be all will also be the same so this is how we are we are going to like create the transaction objects for uh, debit and credit now once we create these transaction objects then 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 the next thing that we have to do is we have to like maintain this into our uh, one of the collections so what we can just do is we can just create one collection over here and then we can add all the transactions into that particular collection now again one more thing that we have missed over here is like we have to add our user id also why our user id because uh, in this particular collection that whatever collection we will create in that collection we must be having all the transactions performed by all the different users right so now let's suppose if i just want to fetch my specific transactions in that case we need our id to fetch um, those transactions right but if you just see in this particular transaction object we don't have uh, our own user id as of now so that is the reason what we have to do is we have to like uh, we have to fetch our uh, uh, we, we have to insert our user id also in this uh, specific object so what i can just do is i can just add one more I can just add one more variable and transaction performed by something like this and now let me just remove this particular constructor because I just want to add the new one so generate constructor something like this and let me just generate a getter setters also so generate getters and setters something like this and now we must be getting some errors in this errors what we have to do like for debit what we have to do is we have to paste the user id which is nothing but a my user id and for the credit we have to like use a pay user id which is nothing but again like uh, when i say my user id it basically means that if i am performing the transaction then this will be the my user id and if i'm just like transferring money to some different account then that different account user id will be nothing but this particular user id something like this now let me just do one thing let me just um let me just do one thing like let me just create one collection so let me just use private static and now over here the question is what kind of collection that i can choose like because we have the sets then we have the list right so over here we can prefer a list why because set will not allow the duplicate values right and we can have the duplicate values inside this because it it might happen like on the same date with the help of same amount we can perform that transaction twice right so for example if i'm just transferring 500 dollars into some other account uh, on the 1st january then on the 1st january january itself i can again transfer 500 dollars into that same account which means that i can perform the same transaction not the same transactions but uh, exact similar transaction twice right so that is the reason we can have the duplicate transactions also so that is the reason we will not go for a set instead of what we can just do we can just go for a list so we can just use list of transactions is equals to new array list something like this and now what i can just do is i can just come little bit inside my debit method and i can just do one thing i can just use transactions dot add and i can just add my transaction something like this and again inside my credit also i can just choose the same thing like transactions dot add and i can add my transaction 
inside that particular list so this is how we can um, like add the transactions now if i just want to test this what i can just do is i can just simply do one thing i can just try to do system dot out dot print ln transaction and similarly over here system dot out dot print ln and i can just print the transaction but before printing it what we have to do is we have to override a two string method so let me just go to the transaction class generate two string and let me just hit the enter and now let's see um, by running the code whether it is working as expected or not and let me just run the code and let's see now over here we have to put the username so if i just go to the user repository then we can find some of the usernames so i'll just go with the user 2 so user 2 password is again user 2 and i can do the third operation which is fund transfer now over here it is asking to enter pay user id account um, a pay account user id so let me just use user 3 so let me just put user 3 and amount so let me just use 200 okay now if you just see the first transaction is nothing but a debit transaction so over here what we are getting like we are getting debt which is nothing but today's date then we are getting a user id transaction user id which is nothing but a user 3 because i was uh, trying to send money to the user 3 then amount is 200 type is nothing but a debit initial balance was 1000 and after that the final balance was 800 and the transaction performed by me which is nothing but a user 2 which is nothing but a my user id right and similarly we have a credit transaction also so transaction date is nothing but 28 transactions like this money is received from user 2 what was the amount it was 200 type was credit and then initial balance was 2000 and after this transaction final balance was 2200 and again transactions performed by user 3 now over here one thing over here we are getting like user 3 like as a transaction performed by but i think it should be user 2 only because this transaction is performed by user 2 only so we can just uh, like uh, we can just uh, put it user 2 but again uh, for the user 2 we have this transaction user id so i think yes we can keep it user 3 only because uh, this particular field is nothing but uh, it is a field so that we can uh, if i just want to fetch my transactions or if i just want to see my transactions only then for example if user 3 want to see all the uh, transactions of user 3 then like we can use this particular field so that we can based on this field we can fetch this particular transaction so yes i think it looks good we can keep it as it is so yes this is how we can like create the transaction add it and add it into a list in the next session we will see like we will uh, how to print these transaction values on the on the like uh, some of the console or maybe on we will add one more option over here to see all the transactions and we will print all those uh, transactions uh, on the screen right so this is how we can create the transactions and use the transactions if you still have any questions let me know into a comment section and i will try my best to help you out in that case i hope you enjoyed this session i'll see you in the next session